All right, so we're out here in the garage and we got one little thing we need to do left before we drop this drivetrain out of here. Now, the one little thing we got to do left is we got to get all this uh, exhaust stuff unbolted from there and get, you know, the drive shaft and everything done. But also we've got a little bit of fab work to get done because the car, as everyone knows, has always been underpowered. We have some fueling mods and everything now, so now it's time maybe to add a little boost to it. So here we are. Now this isn't some glamorous, you know, kit or nothing like that. I'm actually going to be making this kit just like the dude of the rest of mine. The famous, you know, eBay GT45. I got the uh, On3 Performance cooling expansion tank, some other things, and I grabbed some other parts. So we're going to be just completely fabbing everything up. Now with the car having long tubes on it, obviously that's not going to work for a turbo setup. So we're going to remove those. And we got some shorty headers that we bought. Uh, for a deal on eBay and we're going to use those flip them and we're gonna fab up our own manifolds Man, these things are pretty and I got them for a deal, but um, You know, I got these cheaper than I could have bought another set of cast manifolds for so we're gonna cut that end off right there weld some V bands to her and We're gonna start making everything but as you can tell I got my fitment in here I can make sure I had enough room with the radiator also, got just enough room right here with the belt drive accessory. And as you can see, I started playing already with some cold side stuff and uh, started mocking things up, uh, especially as far as placement goes. Now, as far as the intercooler goes, we went with uh, Treadstone Performance, the TR1045 intercooler. Uh, like I mentioned in one of my last videos, that intercooler actually... Uh, was made for the lower radiator support uh, that I just installed there. So it actually fit in there just fine. That is a massive core and there is still plenty of room to boot. So it literally fit right in there. And the fitment is perfect once you actually get the brackets set up the way that you want. I'm gonna really enjoy this, especially since the fog lights even are still gonna be usable. Now, a lot of you turbo guys, you guys lose fog lights and stuff like that. With this, I'm just gonna make it to where I, I wanna keep them. I mean, with these tinted headlights I have in here, I mean, it's, it's crap night vision now as it is. Now, you're also probably wondering, why am I doing this before I pull the engine out and do this and that and drop the transmission and swap that out? Well, the reason is, is I'm gonna be painting the engine bay after I do some body work in there, fix some strut tower rust. So, I don't want to scratch the engine bay up fabricating afterwards. So I may as well fabricate with less room since it has transmission lines and this and that in there. So that way I know when I swap the manual in there that I'll have plenty of extra room. So any routing I take, anything of that sort. So maybe later down the road, if I wanted to get a little bit more serious and build this automatic transmission and go back to an auto car uh, and do more like competitive stuff, I have that option because the kit was built around that originally. So I wanna do that before I actually remove everything. So I'm keeping the power steering and then whatnot, all that stuff. And I mean, eventually I'll probably go to manual steering, manual brakes, but that is that is later down the road. I, I swear that's later down the road. I'm not gonna pop up with that in, in there. But uh, yeah, I wanna have all those options to be able to make it interchangeable. And the best way to do it is to go ahead and fab it now while the automatic uh, is in there with all the lines. And then I can, take any route I want in the future without having to modify things. All right, so in my next video, what I'm gonna do is go over a lot more of the parts I got, like the blow off valve, wastegate, um, other fabrication materials, and we can get a little bit more in depth on things. So now that I have everything marked on there where I want it to go, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the turbo back out, leave my bracing in there with the flange I have. I got it from Motion Raceworks, those guys are awesome. And I'm gonna go ahead and start building the manifolds up to my actual crossover and stuff. So we're gonna get everything just changed out and start fabbing. Now don't forget, I'm doing all of this in my one car garage, all with basic tools that uh, you can go anywhere and buy, like Harbor Freight, um, Home Depot, Lowe's. So I try to keep everything as simple as possible that you can just go anywhere and get the parts to make this stuff. After all, what's the point of doing it DIY if you're not doing some jank stuff DIY-ish? And I know it's gonna come up because it comes up in every one of my Turbo Bill videos. Why didn't you just buy a kit like On3 or this or that? I mean, I got some On3 stuff, but not the actual Turbo kit because 
I enjoy just making the stuff one off for one. Um, and I, since I can do it myself, it cuts a lot of the cost down. I'm literally going to have all of this done for less than what I would pay for just a basic on three kit. And I'm going to have fueling and everything done for that price. So that's why I'm plus, I mean, I got kids I'm teaching. So why not? Now, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys, because I'm sure we're all going to learn something on this one. So we'll see you guys on the next one.